So, good morning everyone that's online there. Um, so I'm Dr. Carl Lee, thanks for coming and watching this presentation. First up, I'm just going to introduce you to the people that are here. So in sort of no real order, we've got Libby, Marcus and Jack from Cobalt Printing. And then just outside the resource room, we've got some of the clinical staff from uh, Knox Private Hospital here. So we've got our nurse unit manager, uh, one of the doctors, two of our infection control nurses, uh, this is Simon from GoProto, uh, who do the 3D printing of the adapters. Raja Baru, who is our director of emergency here. And we've got Mirko and Barry, who's uh, from Erebus Racing. So I just wanted to quickly give you a, a, a quick rundown of how we got here today. So I've been working with Barry and Mirko, and, and we, four weeks ago now, on Wednesday, four weeks ago, Barry rang me to say that Mirko, who's from Milan, um, wants to do something because he uh, knows people that have died and people that are in quarantine in, in Lombardy. Um, so they approached me with these decathlon masks wanting to make CPAP adapters. Um, so my initial thought was well, we're likely to more need PPE than CPAP adapters, uh, but uh, uh, so we're, we've actually developed both. And then about two weeks ago, we understood that um, people at Monash University were working with Cobalt and GoProto, and um, uh, we're working along the same lines, but. Their design is, I think, a bit simpler. So our, our initial design, they're, they're, uh, those that are familiar with the on mask, they have a separate inspiration and two expiration channels, which we can show you. But so we originally we were working on these type of adapters here and making them for use with commercially available 3M uh, filters. But then what uh, GoProto have done have really gone to town and very cleverly designed multiple different adapters where you can then have 3M adapters on top of the HME type filter adapters there in all different configurations as you would have seen in the PDF that was sent out. So there, there are a lot of different things there. So we're talking about using them with these type of filters, so HME filters which are NN99 equivalents, um, or these commercially available 3M filters, uh, which are, uh, these are P2 ones, which are N95, but they can get N99 P3 filters as well. Um, I'll just quickly show you the helmet for those that haven't, uh, the face mask that those that haven't seen it. Clearly it's a snorkel uh, helmet. They're, they're available there from decathlon.com.au or around the world. Uh, they were selling for $35 online, but thankfully decathlon have stopped selling them online and you can only access them if you're a healthcare network. Um, but there are thousands of these available, so I think it may be a good option. Thankfully we don't have a tidal wave like they have in Europe and the US. There are many photos and videos online of uh, patients and, and medical staff wearing these already. I think we have the time to actually develop this properly and go through the right processes and get TPA approval for their use. And so the important thing is, is that um, the snorkel attachment has three channels where the central one is for inspiration and the lateral two are for expiration. And inspiration goes down across the, the, the eye window and then through two diaphragms into the mouth and then it come, runs out laterally along two tubes out laterally there. Uh, there's also an expiration hole here for snorkeling, but we're debating whether uh, we, we've sealed this off completely or whether it could still be left as a one-way valve just for inspiration if, if required, sorry, for expiration if required. Um, but so, uh, so the, this, this meeting is really a functional meeting. We, we're going to test the, these, this equipment with an adult, with a child. Uh, it's, I might ask Jack to show that we've, we've found that they do have an extra small extra small mask, and we think that it may fit a child in regards to, you know, hyper needs or pediatric retrieval needs. We think that it should fit a, this is obviously like a three-year-old size head and body. Yeah, so, yeah, I can see the seal around there. I don't know if you all can see it there, but the seal around that child's head is actually quite good. Obviously, this child would need to be sedated to be compliant with wearing such a mask, but there's, there's potential for this level here for it to be used for retrievals. Um, but yeah, so I think uh, we're just gonna, uh, I think this is two way. If you wanna ask any questions during it, please go ahead. But otherwise, we're gonna just start testing this. Uh, with these helmets, because of this, the, the silicone seal around the ovum of the face, you, you just can't wear glasses. They're not really compatible with glasses, unfortunately, if it was used for the healthcare worker setting. The other thing I've noticed is that this seal here around the, the nose 
in myself on my right eye, and my right cheek must be lower because I get a leak just here. So the way that I've been looking at that is to, like for myself, I, I just, I've been just putting pieces of little foam across the bridge of my nose just to create a more perfect seal around this bridge part of this, this nose part of it. Mm -hmm. okay. And um, this one is breathing which way? Let me put this one on. HMEA. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no fogging. So, for, for PPE, you can already see that the mouth area is fogging up, but the vision area remains clear. So, I think on Jack's uh, face mask, he's got the one way valve still operational, so that, that allows you to breathe out. Yeah, right, yeah. um, uh, so, this is the, the Uno adapter, so it's just all three channels going to one. HME filters, if, you, if you've uh, not tried it or worn them, there is quite a bit of air resistance, so the work of breathing is quite significant. So whereas... So if I put this over you, it should suffocate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> so these three M filters are N95. Um, they've got a cotton protection, but the filter elements inside. But if we replace the... If you replace the HME filter with the N95 filter, um, the work of breathing is much less, yeah? Yeah, you, you, can, you feel that there's no resistance, whereas there's quite a bit of resistance with these uh, HME filters, which are obviously mechanical and ele electrostatic. These are purely, I don't know, I think they're a combination of mechanical and electrostatic as well. And then we can go to a double if we need to. Yeah, so, um, so if you can, I'll ask you to do that. So what uh, Jack's doing now is that they've developed these twin port ones where they're very clever. So I've written on here inspiration. So the inspiration channel goes through the middle channel of this adapter and then both lateral channels run around, around this oval shape and out the expiration channel. So then you can actually have two separate, one for inspiration on the right and one for expiration on the left. And you can actually have it so that you can use P3 filters if you are working in a contained space with a COVID positive patient, you've got the opportunity to wear um, N99 inspiration and N95 expiration. Um, <laughs> it, it can be quite um, isolated. Uh, the other thing, if you're using this as a healthcare worker, uh, the, uh, sorry, uh, because the seal is so good, it, you have to shout. So for us to be able to hear Vlad, oh. you really have to shout to be able to be heard because of the seal around. Let's make sure there's no... Have yeah, you got the water top to immerse in it? We'll switch back. Excuse me. Oh, do I have to let people in? Excuse oh, your waiting room. room. Let's fog up a little in here. Sorry, there are a few people in the waiting room I need to admit admit all. Ah, uh, there you go. Oh, hi, mate. Um, so sorry, I, I think I had a lot of people in the waiting room, so then, I don't know if you were able to see what we're doing. Yeah, I've got you now. Fantastic. Yeah, you've got the decathlon mask on there. Cool. Uh, Mal, were you at the here at the start at five past ten? Um, no, I've been waiting to pop in, but I've popped in now, so I can pick up from here and catch up later if you like. So my apologies to all those that um, I didn't realise that there were people in the waiting room that uh, I needed to give permission to come in. <laughs> um, so w this is being recorded, so we'll be able to uh, load it up to YouTube and Vimeo so that others can watch it too. Apologies for those that um, weren't um, allowed in straight from the start, that's my bad, uh, but uh, it is being recorded. Uh, but essentially we've got, um, we're at Knox Private Hospital here, we've got representatives from uh, 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 
uh, COBOL. And uh, we've got a lot of people outside the recess here uh, from Knox Private Hospital, our uh, emergency department mm -hmm. director, people from Erebus Racing, uh, Go Proto Printing, uh, infection control nurses, some of our other ANUMs and uh, clinical nurse specialists and educators here, our nurse unit manager, uh, a few of the doctors here. And Dr. Vlad has kindly um, agreed to be the, uh, the model for this. Uh, we've, um, we've, we've shown how the, the masks can be used for PPE. We're both a UNO you know, single HME filter or, or 3M commercially available P2 filter. And we've also shown the duo adapter where we can have both separated inspiration and expiration. Um, both separated inspiration and expiration channels there. Uh, but now I think we're going to move on to actually trying it with the, the CPAP BiPAP machines. Now we acknowledge that this, this has all been done in Europe and the US where it's um, uh, critical and they've had to just get on and use it. Whereas in Australia, thankfully, we've been able to avoid the tidal wave that so we've got time to develop this properly. So it's really important to point out that none, none of this stuff is available. We have to send it out to you for personal use or to be put on patients. Really, we're only accepting applications from people who are going to run clinical trials to see TGA approval for these products here. We'll put on a different mark. What we're dealing with now is that um, uh, on these masks, originally there's an exhalation val uh, valve here uh, for when you're snorkeling. But um, so there's two two ports we've had. One is to seal that off, which is I think the way we're going to go, or you can actually have it as an emergency um, inhalation if it's just for a patient. Uh, so for the purposes of CPAP, it's sealed. It's just swapping over to a sealed uh, front diaphragm. The actual attachment, the back strap here, this elastic, has tighteners on the lower two sides, on the left and the right side, which is what we're fitting flat with now. And you can actually achieve quite a bit of tightness and pressure uh, to fit that onto the face. We've on 40% FIO2 and 5 and 12 of EPAP and IPAP. And we're going inhalation filter and an exhalation filter. Yeah. Uh, you're, you, 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 you told me you sleep with a CPAP. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. I do see a little bit of fogging up up here. Do you feel you've got enough of a seal on here? I, I think no, but this uh, up around your bridge of your nose. I think the mask needs to go lower to seal around the top of your nose here. Just so you can feel the silicone around your nose. What's the leak showing, Ethan? Just three liters a minute. Well, it's gone now. Ethan. Cool. Oh, it's right. It's not right, is it? You're not going to be able to see that, I don't think. Yeah, so there's no leak according to the machine. That's exciting. Can't see the glasses. Uh, Vlad's <laughs> saying he can't see you because he's not wearing glasses. But also, it is fogging up a bit now. Some very deep breaths. Crazy tidal volumes. So, what, can you just read out some of the numbers, Ethan? <clears throat> well, his rest rate's 18, his tidal volume's 18.30, he's taking very deep breaths. Um, but peak and spiritual pressure is 12 centimeters. Um, he's got a patient trait that almost all is obviously. Um, Patient initiated breaths, he's not getting any breaths. So. What about if we went to uh, peak respiratory pressures of 20? Mm -hmm. Want to increase the side path to 20? Yeah, just to see if it creates a leak. Yeah. Carl, sorry, I missed the start. Um, when you actually place the mask on the patient's or the officer's head, when you seal it around the forehead, are the tensioning straps only under the occiput at the back, or are there some on the top as well? No, it's just on the chin. 
No, but it, it is over there. It's over the forehead there. See that? Okay. I think that would probably result in your superior lifting that you were talking and loss of seal around the nose. You're just going to make sure it's pulled down. That's yeah, yeah. A seal around the face is yeah, correct, absolutely. But I don't think the seal around Vlad's nose is correct. I can try again. Yeah. Yeah. And the sealer in the face, judging by what you're getting numbers back, is fantastic. Well done. One of the issues when I was wearing it with the CPAP machine is I wanted to tension these. Yes. So it's elastic, it's just set to whatever the elastic is. So. As opposed to a proper CPAP. Mm. So I think what Jack's saying is that there's a limitation in the tightness of this. But I guess, again, with time now, you can actually get these custom fabricated if you wanted to have it a yeah, stronger it, seal. Yeah, adjust it together, pull them down, make them separately, the tension was potentially from here, or yep. we developed one that went around from here to here. Yep. Obviously, they make a snorkeling, so there's going to be a sort of pressure, pressure on your face from the water, which we don't have. So. Hey, what else should we test? So what's, the maximum, <laughs> what's the maximum we got up to there without leaking? Uh, well, we could, I could go back up to 20 and yeah. have these adjusted to see if there's any leaks or stuff like that. And you're feeling you're feel, you're, you're feeling filled up in the lung? Or? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think what might be valuable next is to actually put the CO2 uh, monitor in under the mask mm -hmm. so we can actually measure CO2 in his in his breathing chamber mm -hmm. uh, to get a reading on that. Yeah, so I might yeah. put the laptop down and, and we might connect that up next. Okay. I think Vlad's deliberately taking very <laughs> deep breaths, eh? Or is that how you normally breathe? No, no, no. <laughs> okay. Carl, I'm wondering um, how long anyone has worn one of those for? What's the longest time? And then I'll try to pull this in. Um, well, I've worn it for about an hour and a half, the length of a movie, um, just with a, a free M filter, uh, and that was no worries. I'm not. I think if you're asking about the CPAP, uh, this is a, I don't think it's been worn as as we are doing it now, not locally anyway. <laughs> an end tidal CO2 of 42. Yeah, we've got quite a leak here. Can you feel the seal around your face? Is this all up here? I wonder if we loosen the loosen the CO2 cord and just run it more across the soft part of your cheek rather than over the bony part. So try and try and Vlad, if you can pull that down, lower down on the soft part of your cheek. You might need to lengthen it around the back of the ear. Oh, yeah, that's looking better. Yes, it's all sealed down there. Seems sealed. Yes. Yeah, thank you. Libby's just pointed out that we're just using the Uno adapter. So if we go to the Duo adapter, mm. where expiration is, is quicker out and separated yeah. out, I think that might make a difference in the CO2 reading. Mm -hmm. We won't be able to do that on, the, on this machine because it's just a single. Yeah. It means that it can't give it CPAP, and it can give BiPAP. Yeah. Because it needs to have control of the expiratory. Yeah, well. I understand. Should we, should we just switch it to BiPAP then? Your CO2 that. is dropping now. You still got a leak of about eight liters per minute. So we've got this unit. If you get oxygen in, the hose on the, and the HME on, that's, that's all split. There's a one way velvet here. Right, which is just flow, which is CPAP. Yeah, should we try that? We've got a leak on that. Yeah. And then this duo one, that's like a split channel. Okay. This meeting will finish in about eight minutes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I'm going to get the free version. 
Hey, Carl, are you saying you've still got a leak on the mask? Yeah, it's got a leak now of 12 litres per minute, according with, to the... With, yeah. and it's, you can feel it. He's a bit more securely up on his head. Like, laterally, it looks like the strap's in a different position behind his ear and back under his jawline. It looks like the straps are in a different position the last time. Is it sealed yeah. correctly? Like, could we drop the mask a bit lower? Yeah. I have a memory of we went over, over, actually over your ear last time. You think over your ears with the straps, it's in a different position. On this side? Yeah, it didn't go over. Yeah. Didn't go over last time? No, it would have been under the bottom yeah. strap. Yeah, so this is all stuff that we need to figure out. Yeah. Uh, let me try. Oh, they've actually removed, I just got a message from Zoom saying they've removed the 40 minute limit. So that's good. Um, yeah, feel free to ask questions. I mean, this, this is a working demonstration, so we're trying to sort everything out. We're going to continue. You, um, perhaps I, I will say, you know, thanks for those that have joined in. If you have any questions, you're welcome to stay on and ask questions. Uh, if you have suggestions and things, we're obviously open to any, any input. Uh, but uh, we, we're going to try some different things, and I might try taking up the CO2 uh, tubing so that it creates more of a seal around that, that eye area there. But now we've got a leak of only three. Carl, um, I was wondering if um, you can uh, apply hyperbaric oxygen um, using this device. I'm um, sorry, Aaron, I, I wouldn't know the answer to that. <laughs> As I, don't know, I know minimal about hyperbaric therapy and what pressures would be there be involved. Can you sort of define more? Are you talking about a higher pressure or... Oh, using this inside a hyperbaric chamber, you mean, or? Well, no, no. Um, I guess if if you've got a perfect seal, um, can you increase the pressure to create? You know, there's this issue with um, possible met hemoglobinemia kind of response, and and whether that would respond to hyperbaric oxygen um, in in very sick COVID patients with their low Sats. Wow. Well, I, I have to honestly say I'm, I'm, I don't know. <laughs> Uh, hopefully others can answer that question and can test for that. Um, I guess um, the, other, the other question I had was um, whether you, um, sometimes in ICU they, they put a kind of gel dressing on the face um, to to protect uh, the face and, and that sometimes get better seal. So we're, we're, you can use Vaseline on the, um, on the mask surface to try and get a better seal. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, so uh, I don't know about Vaseline around the eye, but yeah, certainly that's a great option. So yeah, all those things need to be investigated and, and uh, tried. Vaseline's unlikely to affect the silicon. Yep. The silicon's pretty impervious to most chemicals. So okay. Vaseline's not going to affect it. Okay. And also, if, if you're keen on CO2 monitoring, you can put a CO2 monitor in between here. You don't have to have the True. major ones. That's where your leak is coming from. Yeah. You can do a proper ETT CO2 module. Yeah, good point. Yeah. You definitely need CO2 monitoring. You don't have to use the micro stream. Yeah. With the nose, you can just go check if you're using CPAP. Yeah. 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 Okay. Well, what else do you guys want to trial here? Um, you want to try those other adapters? Yeah, be. Uh, I'd like to try the Mr. Box. Okay. Which is, um, you want to take that off for a while? Yeah. Okay. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Thank you. Oh. <laughs> so, this is a regular um, uh, CPAP mask uh, that we've then devised a, a method of attachment for a HME um, filter and then a peak valve. So your exhaust air is, and we've blocked the, the normal flap seal for the CPAP, or sorry, open it up and then block any exit air with a little nozzle there plug. So exit air is forced via one-way valve in here to then exit out this way. So we're exiting uh, safe air, filtered air, and then in here we've got um, air under pressure coming through this tube and oxygen being um, added in through here. And then all this can 
all this can um, swivel around. So if the hoses and things can be swiveled around to suit the direction where the patient's lying or sitting. So, um, and this is for use with a regular um, a home CPAP machine, but uh, I'm not sure whether we can set up that here. Can we use that with the yeah, CPAP well, machine? Yeah. This is for a design for a home CPAP machine. Mm -hmm. No, that's the restaurant, just the mass that we use for our okay. CPAP as well. So okay. Can we put that on? Yeah. yeah. This has all been washed. So can you take the CO2 off? Yeah. Let's take this off for a little so the the use case of what we're looking at at the moment is if there were not enough um, if there are not enough hospital level ventilators or CPAP bypass machines available, then either a home CPAP mask or the decathlon mask could be converted using wall oxygen and a home CPAP device to provide some positive pressure for um, the sort of next tier of patients down. So you want to see if you can dial up that pressure again, show how the heat's working? Yes. You're feeling some pressure on. Yeah. Then do you want to dial it up so it um it either leaks, we get a leak out of the heat belt, or you can't. Um, you know how yesterday we were trialing. We were opening up the heat a bit. Yeah. To get more pressure on yeah, the get uh, less pressure and then work it to a point yeah, where it starts. Yeah. So we're just matching the what the machine is providing to where the peep was at. So I can feel okay. there's a bit of a leak happening here. Yeah. Um, whether it's down at five peep. So we've got ten on the machine and then um, when I get to about ten on the peep it seems to equalise it. I can only feel expiration. Yeah. It's not coming through otherwise. Okay. So in here, there's a one-way valve that's forcing the air out that way and allowing air through and oxygen in. Are you getting enough oxygen coming through? Yeah. And you feel, is that giving you uh, pressure in your lungs? Yeah. All right. Do you think that level of pressure is, would be enough to be beneficial? Yes. It's what? This is my prescribed pressure. All oh, right. I normally sleep on ten. Okay. Ah, <laughs> uh, you sleep on ten. Do you want to sit? Do you want to dial? Do you want to dial it up more? Do you want to try more pressure? Yeah. Yeah. So my opinion is that that's just a potential value for the purpose of seal it. Because that channel for inspection is just secure. Yeah. So inspiration is inspiration at the same. So the inspiration is down the middle. Yeah. There's pretty high areas. There's really two parts. So now we're going to the thing. And or just the pitch of the thing as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, say it again. One cc syringe. Oh, okay. Can you get one cc syringe, Carl? Carl, we just see if we can get a one um one cc syringe. Yes. There's a bit of a leak. Mhm. Mm At that pressure. Mm -hmm. That's what you do at home. 
This man must have an excellent watering system at home. <laughs> That's pretty sharp and dangerous in your pocket there, lad. Right? So with this sort of pressure, you're probably getting a bit of a, a break in the seal around your around the mask. Yeah. Can you hold that Mm. Yeah, it looks like you're getting good pressure now. Yeah. So the hope is that that's pushing all the fluid down deeper into the lungs and freeing up the alveoli, <laughs> freeing up the alveoli so that um, you're getting a faster rec recovery in that subacute stage uh, prior to having to go to a ventilator. So with pressure on the intake and the inspiration and pressure on the expiration, uh, that keeps a constant pressure on the, um, on the lung. Is Mark out there? No, Mark's not out there. Okay. Well, has anyone got any questions on that? I'm Jack, by the way. I think everyone's muted. Okay. I'm getting away. I'll mute everyone. I just unmuted you if anyone has any questions. Anyone else have any questions on this one? We might be done, Cal. Yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Kate Hoskin, for setting all this up for us. My pleasure. It was awesome. Good job, guys. So it's not the be all and end all, but um, you know, we certainly think it warrants further development and in real life. Uh, so yeah, we do want uh, those that are interested to come forward and see. Uh, you know, Hi. All right, I might close off the meeting. See you, Andrew. See you, Ken, and Sharon, Vana. Thank you, everyone, Dizzy. All right, I'm going to stop recording and turn it off.